We are here at the Buchmann Institute for Molecular Life Science in the group of Professor Achilleas Frankakis. And we focus on structural biology. We want to unravel protein structures, cellular structures, with the help of cryo-electron microscopy. We create a basis that other scientists can use to build their strategies on finding medical treatments or other therapies against certain diseases. Cryo-EM actually starts with the preparation of the sample. The sample can be a protein solution, whole cells or lysed cells or just some organelles extracted from cells. We use uh, different types of EM grids with different supports depending on the application or the biocompatibility. So glow discharging allows the EM grid to better retain aqueous samples. Thereby an electric current changes the grid surface to become hydrophilic and charged. In order to investigate samples in its native state, in cryo-EM, we typically use plunge freezing. Thereby, the sample is rapidly frozen in a way that ice crystals cannot be formed. So the ice freezes down so rapidly that it stays amorphous and electron transparent. So before the EM grids can be loaded into the cryo-electron microscope, they have to be clipped into a so-called uh, auto grid. It's a supporting copper ring and the grids are in a cassette. And the cassette is then transferred into the electron microscope and from there on an automatic device takes the individual grids from the cassette and puts it into the EM column where the grids are then imaged. So in transmission electron microscopy the electrons are emitted in a high vacuum chamber by a so-called field emission gun and then by electromagnetic lenses directed and focused onto the sample. The final image that is created is captured by a camera. We use cryo-electron tomography, whereby we image the sample from different angles and thereby generate a series of 2D images, which we call the tilt series. The recorded tilt series can be computationally reconstructed into a 3D volume, which we call a tomogram. Particles like, for example, ribosomes can be computationally extracted from such a tomogram and we then average those so-called subtomograms in order to first achieve a higher resolution. On the other hand, we compensate thereby for the missing wedge. By retrieving such 3D information of proteins in their native environment, we better understand also how proteins interact in their native environment. And especially for larger protein complexes, cryo-electron tomography really is an excellent opportunity. So the ultimate goal of our group would be to combine the true power of cryo-electron tomography together with pattern recognition uh, techniques in order to match automatically resolved structures in the native cellular environment. And thereby we would better understand interactions and nature of life in the end and show more and more that uh, the cell is not an envelope of freely diffusing enzymes and substrates, but really a highly organized, complex, but well-coordinated uh, machine.